the argument as to why we have states and why we have societies in the fa- fashion that we do is that there's a biological element to it, that this is something that is deeper than states. This is deeper than uh, capitalism. This is something that is innate in the human being. Uh, and, and I've always felt that there was something a bit off about that um, because as you point to, and I think many other anthropologists, people that are looking at it from maybe a very anthropological perspective are, are examining all kinds of different forms of societies and they're seeing that, no, that, that, that human beings are actually quite diverse. We're capable of organizing ourselves in so many different ways. Um, would you say that, that the state is a natural function of human beings and that we have to uh, kind of counter it with certain maybe e- uh, kind of a egalitarianism that's almost... Uh, I remember hearing this term from some anthropologists describing a fierce egalitarianism and they were studying hunter gatherers and these are these very nomadic tribes and they had these mechanisms within their societies, within their cultures to kind of de-emphasize the ability uh, for certain individuals to gain uh, leader leadership, right? So that they, they basically had these mechanisms in their societies to, inhibit this desire that certain people might have to to build hierarchies to maintain control over other human beings um and and i feel like i have this contention within myself whether human beings are more prone towards egalitarian social structures or towards more hierarchical social structures and that if we are more prone to hierarchy we still should desire egalitarianism but we have to build maybe a societal or cultural mechanisms in order to to inhibit that element of our nature. Does that make any sense? I, I feel like I, I just wondering if you had any insights into that. Yeah. Uh, the argument that humans have a biological need or, or drive uh, for the state makes about as much sense as an argument that humans have a biological need for the internet. Um, it just doesn't make sense because the, for the vast majority of human history, there's been no state, um, and and also in recent history, there have been uh, many stateless peoples. There are constantly moments in which state authority fails, and people do just fine. Um, so it just it's just can't really be taken seriously as as an argument. It's um, I mean it's like phrenology or or all of these other uh, scientific arguments which. Uh, really have one purpose. It's not to interpret any body of evidence because there is no evidence to support it. It's it's simply an attempt to justify hierarchies that exist uh, within our society. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also, I think, implicitly a, a white supremacist and colonialist argument because if you look at that argument historically, you have uh, the British Empire, uh, the Spanish Crown, French Empire, the United States, all these other settler states, Australia, etc., um, going in and just unleashing this wave of genocide against any society that were different, that was different, uh, killing them off or enslaving them, and then and then their scientists come along and say um, and claim some universal human nature or or, um, or wipe out they they help to erase. Uh, the the memory of the the way of, the ways of being of those other societies. Um, you mention that maybe there's a need uh, for cultural mechanisms to prevent hierarchy. Yes. Um, I don't think there's any th- such thing as human nature. I think we can only talk about human capabilities or potentials. Um, humans have the capability of creating egalitarian horizontal societies, and humans have the capability of creating hierarchical, uh, oppressive, exploitive societies. We, we can we have the whole range. We, have, we can paint in the entire palette. Uh, and ultimately, it's a collective question of um, what we want to do. Every single human society has cultural mechanisms that uh, encourage certain behaviors and discourage other behaviors, every single one. So it only makes sense that um, the society that doesn't want to be ruled, the society that doesn't want to have masters and slaves would develop cultural mechanisms that uh, encourage egalitarianism, that encourage um, uh, suspicion of, of leaders or people trying to accumulate power or resources. Um, however, I also think it's safe to say that um, 
like when you talk about these these anthropological theories of of sort of like willfully egalitarian societies that that get studied and, and end up in these lists of, of characteristics of, of stateless societies. Um, I think it's safe to say that the vast majority of those societies uh, are post-state societies. They're societies that um, already have had contact with states, either neighboring states that they've had to um, that they've had to fight fight off and and resist or run away from uh, due to that that <clears throat> age-old state activity of of uh, kidnapping people and, and forcing them to um, to work and to obey, or there even societies that had a state and then got rid of that state in one way or another and learned and evolved and became smarter. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't at all be surprised to find and, and, and if we're going to talk about anthropological evidence and whatnot, it seems to be suggested um, that actually the um, uh, the most actively anti-authoritarian societies uh, in human history have been post-state societies. Um, these these are societies that have that have wised up, that have learned, uh, at least with regard to with regard to states, and so they've probably developed more cultural mechanisms um, to prevent the reemergence of the state. And that's exactly what we would have to do if we were ever able to overthrow the state. And and horizontally organize our own societies. Uh, I mean, we've all been trained in um, uh, reproducing oppressive systems, reproducing hierarchies, um, whether by obeying or leading. Uh, we will. I mean, anyone who grows up in our society will have generations and generations of, of trauma to work through. It's not a, a change that can happen in just one generation. So we would have, uh, without a doubt, a very urgent need. Um, to come up with cultural mechanisms that uh, that encourage uh, healing, that encourage anti-authoritarian behaviors, and that discourage uh, oppressive and exploitive behaviors. And these are mechanisms that you can see being developed in uh, anti-authoritarian movements across the globe.